Professor Dave and Chegg here. We've learned about two definitions for acidity and basicity. First, there was the Arrhenius model, which was about the production of hydronium and hydroxide. Then we learned the more widely applicable bronsted lowry model, which highlights proton transfer. But there is one more definition to learn, and that is the Lewis model. Let's see what that's all about as well. With the Lewis model, instead of focusing on protons, we will focus on electrons. A Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor, and a Lewis base is an electron pair donor. There is actually some overlap with the bronsted lowry model, as a Lewis base isn't inherently any different from a bronsted lowry base. Take, for example, ammonia picking up a proton to become the ammonium ion. This qualifies as an acid-base reaction in both the bronsted lowry model and the Lewis model. But a Lewis acid can act as an acid even without possessing any hydrogen atoms. Take something like boron trifluoride. We know that boron and fluorine have very different electronegativities, so these covalent bonds are quite polar. That means the central boron atom is highly electron deficient, and thus will attract electron density, such as the excess electron density on a Lewis base. A Lewis base can coordinate to the boron atom, forming this Lewis acid base adduct and we do regard this as acid-base chemistry. Notice that, again, while ammonia works as a base in either model, this Lewis acid does not qualify as a bronsted lowry acid, as it does not have any hydrogens with which to engage in proton transfer. Without any hydrogens, it is incapable of transferring protons, and thus does not fit the bronsted lowry definition. Another example of Lewis acid-base chemistry involves the hydration of metal ions. Something like an aluminum 3 plus cation can interact with water molecules, where it accepts a pair of electrons from each of six water molecules to form this aluminum hexahydrate. There are many other examples of Lewis acid-base chemistry that go beyond the scope of what we are learning here, so for now we can just understand the definition and be able to identify examples of Lewis acids and bases. And with that, we know about a third definition of acids and bases, the Lewis model. Again, this is a different model that we don't use as much as bronsted lowry but it does have some very useful applications. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.